Hello people of the web and YouTube, TP here, welcome back to Hack Time, whoa. So okay guys, if you couldn't tell from the title of today's video, today I'm going to be talking about this, well, button box I've been putting together over the past couple, well, weeks, and so far, I got to say this, this project was fun, it was really simple, and I really recommend you guys to do a little bit better at it than what I did, because if you can't tell just from looking at this, here I'll throw up a closer image, I didn't use a single resistor, and I just used um pretty much wire and shrink tube that I had lying around, so in total this whole project was about $3, and the only $3 I think I spent were maybe on the $2 switches and the $1 case. But yeah, other than that, this thing turned out pretty good. I bet it won't last long, because like I said, I didn't use a single resistor, but overall, importing the code and getting it all to function was pretty straightforward and simple. Although, guys, if you are planning to do something similar to this with the DigiSpark, I kind of recommend you to stay away from using a DigiSpark, because there are knockoff boards, and I think mine may be one of them, in which case the fifth or sixth pin will be a reset pin, and I don't really think you can fix that without doing like a ton of hassle and replacing the bootloader and stuff on this device and I didn't want to do that so I just kind of went with four buttons although I could possibly do a fifth one I just didn't feel like it was necessary but yeah guys, like I said, don't use a DigiSpark for this project, use something like an Arduino or any other kind of um, development board out there but yeah, other than that, this thing functions pretty good. It was simple to put together, and just to show you guys that it works, I'm going to push a button to, well, minimize uh, Audacity here in 3, 2, 1, and it's gone. It's pretty instantaneous. The only button that has slightly a delay is the fourth button on pin 4. Just keep in mind, because I didn't use a single resistor at all in this project, there is a little bit of a delay or a debouncing you have to do within the code in order to get this function 100% correctly. But out of the four buttons I put on here, all three work pretty much instantaneously. I can push the last button down here, it opens the folder up, and if I push the top button up here, it would log me off, so I'm not going to push that. And as of the third button down here, it just opens command prompt after about... I like to say a 3 second delay, but yeah, if I put a resistor on that or something, or a diode, I'm pretty sure I could correct for that. But yeah, other than that guys, that's pretty much it for this project. Um, there are some things I wish, however, that I could have done that maybe I should have done. Let me just get Audacity back up. I, I wish I could have fit in these 5 volt LED strips. That was my original goal, that was the whole reason why I got this case, even though I couldn't rip out the dividing blocks really simply. Um, I was going to put a light underneath every button, that way when I push a button, the button would light up, indicating that the button indeed worked. But there's only so much milliamps you can pull out of a DigiSpark or out of a USB port, so... I decided not to do that, although I'm sure I could get it to work, and even then if it didn't work, I just didn't want to have to drill another hole in the case to, well, you know, plug in a 5 volt adapter. But yeah guys, speaking of holes, as you could probably see, I got a blue cord here on this thing. It doesn't really match my whole computer setup, so I'm probably going to undo the blue cord considering it's fairly simple. All I got to do is open the lid up, pop the cord out, change the color, and there's a little notch here allowing me to feed another cord through if I wish. And with that said, that's mainly it for this project. Um, I just wanted it to be overall really customizable, and in which case it is, if I ever want to put these LEDs in, I could do it anytime I wished, and if I want a different cord to match my setup, all I have to do is just undo the cord and put another one on and plug it in, and it's as good as new. But yeah guys, that's pretty much it for today's video, and like always, I will be listing down every part I used in this project down below in the description, and in total, it should only cost you about $3 maybe, the DigiSparks a dollar to $2, and the buttons are pretty much a dollar to $2 also. So yeah, all you're really gonna need other than those two things is some wire, a soldering gun, and a container to put it all in, which shouldn't be too hard, even this ugly transparent ass looking container worked good for me 
But yeah, with that said, like I said, I'm gonna leave this off here now. DTPK signing off. Peace. I basically took out the old board and put the other air ionizer in, he shrinked it up a little. Now this tool, as I already probably mentioned it, is called Desktop Restore, and by far...